Ligotti in triplicate by S.T. Joshi. Ligotti, Thomas. My work is not yet done, three tales of corporate horror. Illis Harry O. Morris. Poplar Bluff, Missouri, Mythos Books, 2002. 200 p. I admit with shame and embarrassment that I have not kept up with the work of Thomas Ligotti since the appearance of his last full-scale collection of tales, Noctuary, 1994, in spite of the fact that I have repeatedly declared him, along with Ramsey Campbell and T.E.D. Klein, one of the few shining lights in contemporary weird fiction. Campbell, with unmatched productivity, keeps rolling along with a novel nearly every year and a story collection every few years, so that his output now ranks only with Algernon Blackwood's in its fusion of high quality and copiousness. Klein, on the contrary, has issued only a few short stories since the appearance of the landmark collection Dark Gods, 1985, and one begins to doubt that his long-awaited second novel, Night Town, will ever see the light of day. Ligotti has been somewhere between these extremes, having published several modest small press collections of stories but not, to my knowledge, a collection of the size of Noctuary or its two predecessors, Songs of a Dead Dreamer, 1986, Rev 1989, and Grim Scribe, 1991. One of these items, I believe, even featured a CD of music. There were rumors some years ago that Ligotti was written out, or that he was unsure what direction to take in his work, but I am unable to vouch for the truth of these reports. At any rate, any notion that Ligotti has already finished saying what he has to say has been put triumphantly to rest in his latest volume, My Work Is Not Yet Done. The subtitle is of some significance, and I make no apology for drawing upon the facts of biography to provide some background. Ligotti has long worked for Gale Research Company in Detroit, the volume is dedicated to a co-worker, Marie Lazary, and he has drawn upon his corporate experiences with great panache in these three tales. One would not wish to read any excessive autobiographical significance in the crazed murderer who is the protagonist of the long title story, but Ligotti's familiarity with the petty office politics that renders work at many companies a living hell is evident on every page. And yet, the first thing that strikes us when we contemplate the story my work is not yet done is its very existence. Here is a nearly 150-page novella perhaps 50,000 words in length that fills three quarters of the book. This length would not be intrinsically anomalous in the work of someone like Blackwood, Lovecraft, Elifanu, or Campbell, remember needing ghosts, who have discovered that the novelette or novella is particularly suitable for the creation of cumulative horror, but for Ligotti it calls for some explanation. This is because, in an interview published in the magazine Dagon. In 1988, he stated bluntly, Critics of supernatural horror fiction have repeatedly observed that the novel is a difficult form for telling a tale of terror. After brooding for years over this matter from the viewpoint of a potential novelist, not to mention the many aborted attempts at actually writing the things, I find this form too difficult for me. To be sure, my work is not yet done cannot be considered a full-scale novel, but it is certainly about as long as Lovecraft's. At the Mountains of Madness or the case of Charles Dexter Ward, or, to switch genres, any of the short novels of Dashiell Hammett. I certainly welcome Ligotti's expansion of his fictional palette in the direction of the novel, although I share with him a grave doubt as to the aesthetic feasibility of the horror novel as conventionally written. Ligotti rightly maintains that such a work, except in the hands of a master, tends to lapse into merely a mystery or suspense narrative with horrific interludes and indictment that could, regrettably, apply to nearly all the horror novels written over the past 30 years. In My Work Is Not Yet Done Ligotti has ingeniously found several ways to avoid this dilemma specifically by the use of first-person narration, which thereby allows the tale to achieve that unity of effect that Poe recognized as the sine qua non of the short story, and by writing what appears at the start to be merely a mundane, if elegantly narrated, tale of a serial killer, but which slowly metamorphoses into something very different and much more alarming. My Work Is Not Yet Done introduces us to Frank Dominio, a longtime worker at a company that is wisely never named, and whose actual business is also never specified. Like many employees, Frank deliberately seeks to maintain his level of mediocrity in order to remain in a stable job that does not require from him any excessive degree of mental energy. Through a series of accidents, Frank finds himself forced to resign, blaming a brace of co-workers for what appears to be deliberate malice on their part in causing his departure, he undertakes to murder them one after the other in systematic fashion. At this point we seem involved in nothing more than a tedious and predictable suspense tale in which each victim will suffer worse torments than his or her predecessor, but in some, wisely unexplained, fashion Frank lapses into a bizarre half-dead, half-alive state, with the power of leaving his body and also, apparently, with the power to transform the very atoms of his victims into something very much worse than their already grotesque human forms. It is at this point that the particularly twisted imagination that we know from the rest of Ligotti's work comes into play. This novella in particular, and the volume as a whole, displays an augmentation of that pungent, 
misanthropic wit that Ligotti has gradually made his own, and which signals him as an authentic heir of Ambrose Bierce. My work is not yet done is, for all its grisly horror, really quite funny, albeit in a bitter, sardonic manner. Consider a pen portrait of one co-worker, Sherry. If she closed her eyes and didn't speak Sherry could indeed pass for an attractive human female. But the moment she spoke or the moment her thing-like eyes came into view, she became a gorgon, no mythic significance intended or necessary. This duality that Sherry embodied could often be a source of tremendous conflict to those around her, who one moment would experience the tight pull of her figure and the next moment, when she happened to speak or the image of her eyes loomed up, would be inwardly retching with disgust at the very existence of this Sherry thing, as well as heaving away inside with self-revulsion for having felt an attraction to this creature. Lest one fancy that Ligotti has lapsed into misogyny, he makes clear that his disgust as what Evelyn Waugh called those vile bodies is gender neutral. Richard's stature was more than that of someone who purchased his suits at clothes stores catering to large-bodied men. His physical conformation, straight and solid from head to toe, was imposingly athletic, the anatomy of an erstwhile ball player of some kind who had kept his shape into middle age. In all probability Richard had garnered his share of shining trophies for the glory of self and school. He wouldn't be the first member of middle to upper level management with a background in the world of sport, with all the playing field metaphors they borrowed from that milieu, chief among them being all that puke-inducing nonsense about teams, the characterization of someone as a team player was at the top of my lineup of emetic expressions of this sort, dot. As will be evident from these extracts, Ligotti has tempered what in the past might have been regarded as his excessively tortured prose, and has instead evolved a smoothly flowing narrative style that, if perhaps a bit more spartan in its exotic metaphors than before, is nonetheless capable of powerful emotive effects. After the Golconda of horror we find in this richly textured novella, the two tales that round out the volume I have a special plan for this world and the Nightmare Network seem almost like afterthoughts, but they offer aesthetic rewards of their own, plunging us into a far more surreal world than that presented in my work is not yet done, and thereby reassuring those devotees of Ligotti who might have been alarmed that he was abandoning his uniquely bizarre vision for the mundanities of the mystery suspense tale, however artfully managed. My work is not yet done. Displays a Thomas Ligotti at the height of his form in imaginative range, in verb of style and precision of language, and in cumulative power and intensity. And it reveals several new sides to Ligotti's work and ability to draw upon workaday experience, a tart, biting wit that spares no person or object within the range of its jaundiced vision, and, most of all, an expansiveness of plotting and character development that may one day allow us to witness that most anomalous and unexpected of eventualities, a Thomas Ligotti novel.